Welcome back. You're live with Express. So thank you so much for tuning in as we turn to health matters and quite a broad discussion this morning. Indeed. Why? Because from the 3rd of November to the 3rd of December, we observe Disability Rights Awareness Month. So important. And it all leads up to the International Day yeah. of Persons with Disabilities this coming Sunday. So in light of this, today we are focusing our health topic on congenital disabilities and disorders. And we are back in the hot seat, the hot couch with Dr. Darren yeah. Green. Um, <laughs> Doc, this I think is something that's close to both of our hearts, um, just looking at the kind of campaigns you involve yourself in. Uh, from my perspective, the first obvious question, what is a congenital disability? How would you define it? Yes, yeah, so the World Health Organization uh, have assisted in with the definition as being a structural or functional uh, disorder or disability from the time of birth. Uh, onwards basically and what people don't understand is obviously the causes of these abnormalities can start before the child is born and obviously some of them are even acquired as in during the first few years of life so a, a very big spectrum of, of disorders that occur some of them obvious some of them really difficult to pick up beforehand but we'll get into that um, I know each is very unique and certainly from the parents perspectives and what that that child will experience a singular journey um, when you talk about the causes pre-birth what could those be what, what weighs in yes yeah, so basically congenital uh, obviously implies that you're born with the abnormality yeah. so there are many things that are dependent on the genetic coding so off, some yeah. of the things and 50% of causes happen between the 24 weeks and full-term pregnancy 50% of um, abnormalities that are found happen in that time period and often it involves genetic coding often it involves infections that can be associated with the with the mother itself or obviously it can also involve nutritional deficiencies as well something as simple as folic acid can affect the development of a nervous system not in all cases but certainly we, we've seen massive surges in of improving congenital abnormality statistics by looking at things like nutrition for example medicine has come so far in terms of how we treat these things not nearly far enough I would imagine from mm -hmm. a parent's perspective but in terms of detection and early detection this raises yeah. all sorts of moral questions I know on one of side course. of the argument but where does medicine stand on early detection pre-birth so we have what's called a very detailed sonar that happens during your pregnancy which is which is specifically uh, basically arranged by someone uh, normally a gynecologist that's actually super specialized in uh, looking at sonars for example uh, and they are so experienced at looking at details of the tiny details of a, of a developing heart for example yeah. they can pick up abnormalities of the heart chambers the neural tube as those cells divide and fold over each other and elongate and split out to form the spinal cord the vertebra all those kind of things can be looked at uh, you know basically on the on the detailed sonar obviously the biggest concern here is cost and access to everyone yeah. I know routine wise those detailed sonars aren't done on everyone they're normally only done on high-risk patients in the state sector and what would you do then with that information once it's done? Correct. We're going to talk about the support structures that are available and we're going to introduce you to a mother and son that are truly beautiful as we continue this discussion, a vitally important Indeed. one at that. It's my feel -good show. So we are back with Dr. Darren Green and today's topic looking at congenital disorders and disabilities and joining us all the way from Nelspate now to discuss a bit more about the personal side of this very singular journey and in particular cerebral palsy is Teresa Kurtzen and her gorgeous four-year-old son Jordan who was born with cerebral palsy. Uh, Teresa, welcome. Um, I've loved connecting with you only over 30 seconds. Uh, I'm really starting to get you and, and your vibe yeah? and I know you do a huge amount of work um, around cerebral palsy and support as well so congratulations for that but welcome to the show thank you thanks for having me um, and welcome Jordan um, I'm loving the outfit here Superman inspired I know Ewan is going to be very very impressed with that yes. um, just very quickly um, again if you can for us just explain what is cerebral palsy how would you define that yeah so the cerebrum part of it refers to the brain it refers to the outer shell of the brain called the cerebrum and palsy is referring to either the motor weakness that occurs uh, the motor symptoms predominantly either on that you could have different subtypes depending on which area of the brain is affected like a hemiplegia involving a left side of the body or both legs can be affected 
for example, or, or legs and arms can be affected. But the other subtypes that don't give you weakness as such, but just moving, mo movement abnormalities, like writhing movements and spasms and that kind of thing. So a lot of different subtypes, but generally it's uh, as a result of a malformation of certain shells of the brain or structure of the brain during, that's in the pre-birth stage, or after birth as well. There's things like uh, during the birth process, a lack of oxygen or nutrients to certain parts can damage certain parts of the brain, etc. as well. Teresa, I'm sure you have heard technical medical jargon uh, for hours and hours, <laughs> days, years. Yes. Um, all of that means nothing when weighed up against the love of a mother for a child. I'm sure your journey with this little man has been um, an incredible one at that. How did you first find out about Jordan having cerebral palsy and, and what was that like? Okay, what happened exactly was Jordan was born prematurely at 30 weeks. Okay. Okay, and then wow. he was kept in the in ICU in a hospital in Joburg for three months. He was there for three months, and at the last during the last month of his stay there, he um, he got meningitis, and he had that for quite a while because we couldn't pick it up that he had meningitis, and that mm. um, caused his brain damaged, damage on his brain. Yeah. And then after that, we did a sonar, and he was just filled with water. Um, and then the doctor that did the VP shunt, he's got a VP shunt in his brain to drain the fluid. He then diagnosed, he said he's got hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain, yeah. and then he said he's going to be cerebral palsy. What has it, I know we've only got a few minutes to talk yes, about yes. this, but what has it been like from your perspective to be a parent of a young man well, with cerebral palsy? Well, at first you go through all those stages of denial and anger and you want to blame somebody Furious and anger, all those yeah. things. But um, mm. it happened, Jordan is the way he is. And I've got to cope with that and I've got to be strong for him. So, um, yes, it's been hectic. There's been problems in hospitals and all that, but, yeah. You, you, you approach it like a mother would and you, <laughs> you beat, beat back down those, those challenges. What, what are some of those singular challenges? What do you have to deal with on a daily basis with Jordan? Um, like this, at the moment, he's spastic. Um, it's difficult to dress him. It's difficult to feed him. He's got a feeding tube in his tummy for which I feed him, a Mickey okay. tube. Um, Specific, spastic is the most. The spasming. Yes, that's the worst. Um, he does sometimes have fits. It's difficult. It was difficult for me to identify them, but I can, mm. after four years now, identify a fit. <laughs> but um, it's difficult to feed him. Yeah, difficult to hold him. Difficult to, yeah, to dress him. Um, and he doesn't get a fever. So when he's sick, I can't tell that you he's don't sick know, yeah. because he can't. He can't. Yeah. His body temperature can't reach a fever. So yes, basically so every aspect of yes, life is, yes, is challenging. Needs, I know you, you are doing therapy, a huge yeah. amount to support other mothers and parents in your yes. position. Just very quickly, I know you've got an event coming up. Yes. Um, I've got an auction going at Speer in Stellenbosch on the 9th of December. And I would love everybody to come and meet us and support us. And oh, I've got wonderful wine sponsored <laughs> that we just picked up yesterday. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful bottles. It's, um, it's collector items, actually. Oh, wow. Um, and I would love for people to come um, and, and support us by, by buying and auction. It's going to be an auction. We've got those details on our screen right okay, now. Yes, Teresa, wonderful. thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having um, me. And thank you for all the work that you've done. Jordan, you're a little champion, sir, an absolute champion. Thanks. It's been lovely meeting both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my feel good show. It's my feel good show. Welcome back. You're live with Expresso as we continue with Disability Awareness Month, a vitally important month and a vitally important conversation that we are having with Dr. Darren Green this morning. And we are now joined by a gorgeous young lady, Bootle Mene, who is five years mm -hmm. old and was born with a birth defect called spina bifida. Um, which occurs when the vertebra don't form properly around part of the spinal cord. Now, because yep. of this, she will never be able to walk. And she joins us this morning with her equally gorgeous mother, Zekone, who looks like a model walking onto the set. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining us this okay. morning. Um, it really is awesome to, to have you here and to okay. meet this gorgeous young thing. Um, I know it's a lot to take in in the yeah. studio. So, Butle, thank you so much for coming out this morning. You look gorgeous as well. Um, Doc, if I can ask you just, again, define spine of a for, the, for us, please. Yeah, so if you look at the word spina, obviously involves the spinal, the spinal column, and bifida implies a bifurcation, a, a fork. So the vertebra shape and the vertebra closing 
is what actually goes wrong during the, the neurological development stage early on in the baby's development. So when baby's born, you, you might not know, because, because of the different degrees of spina bifida you get, sometimes it's all closed up and you don't know until later on in life with a mild case, you see it on an x-ray. Oh, that last vertebra didn't, didn't, didn't quite close fuse, properly. Yeah it zips down basically and closes properly as, as, birth con as the development continues. However, there are, are more severe cases where, for example, uh, a large part of the spinal column can actually be exposed because of the vertebra not closing around the spinal cord, leaving the nerve roots and the, and the nerve tissue exposed. And uh, those are what can lead to obviously damage and fluid leaking out at the bottom of the spine and that kind of thing, yeah. which is called a meningo seal and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at. And uh, obviously there's a spectrum of, 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 of the disease according to uh, the severity. I don't know, I mean, I've asked you to explain seven years of, of medical science in mm -hmm. I mean, one day, and, I, and I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing now as okay. a parent, how challenging has it been to be a parent of, of Boothley? I know you love her with all your heart, oh, but how, so. how, how tough has it been? I had to go in and out of hospital constantly because she was very young. Sometimes they say it's blocked, it has an infection, and sometimes because of that, um, she doesn't pass on stool properly, mm. and she still wears nappies and everything. Yeah, that's about it. What, what, what do you tell yourself every day? Do you even need to motivate yourself or is this just what a mother does? How, how do you motivate yourself through this process? No, it's just constantly I must love her and thanks to my parents, they help me a lot. Friends, everyone. That's the only thing I can say. I think the most okay. important thing here is because Butler looks like a beautiful little mm -hmm. soul. I'm okay. getting such a lovely energy from her. What has she taught you through this process? Oh, I never had a boy bone. I never thought I can I can be strong for someone else. That was yeah. that. That's exactly what happened. I became strong for her, and then constantly I used to cry, but not anymore. She has taught me how to love unconditionally, and that's about it. Yeah. She's an incredible little girl. You're an incredible mm -hmm. mother. Thank, um, you. thank you so much mm -hmm. for opening a window into your, okay. into your story. Thank you. Um, I really hope that you get the support <laughs> that you need. You, you clearly right. deserve as a, a mother who has thank gone so you. far above and beyond. Butle, you're a superstar. <laughs> thank you so much for coming through, sweetheart. Thank, thank, thank you so much for, for joining <laughs> sure. us this morning. Pleasure. It's my feel good worth show. So I think we all know, or at least we should know, about the campaign Bread Tags for Wheelchairs, very well-known South African initiative that has changed hundreds of lives by donating very much needed wheelchairs to South Africans living with disabilities who can't afford one due to financial difficulties. There are far too many people dealing with this reality. And right now we are very proud to be joined by the director of the Polystyrene Association of South Africa, Andre Spankenberg and Paul Rus, learner, Diabia Janse van Rensburg, who is one of the campaign's, I think, most enthusiastic bread tag collectors. Guys, welcome. I know you're both Afrikaans. I'm very English and get teased for all the Afrikaans I say on this show. So please, if you want to answer in Afrikaans, Diabia, just feel free. But I'm going to start with you, Audrey. Um, this is an incredible campaign that has just built so much momentum and done so much good. Talk me through the bread tags for wheelchairs campaign. <clears throat> How exactly does it work? Um, basically, we have collectors or coordinators across the country, and they collect the tags. They are then sold onto a company who makes seedling trays from it, so they pay us the money, and then we buy a wheelchair for somebody. Easily done. How, how did it all come about? Because it's grown now into it something has. really massive. It has really grown. It started off about 10 years ago we started. So when we started, you know, we had like five or six people, <laughs> and all of a sudden we've got hundreds of people and everybody's collecting a bread tag and yeah, you know, a small thing makes a big difference. How many bread tags does it take to get a wheelchair? It depends on the cost of the wheelchair. For a basic wheelchair that Brookley was in just now, hers is about 200 kilograms of, of uh, bread tags. So that's a lot of bread, man. That's a lot of bread. You don't look like you eat a lot of bread, dear yeah. um, But you are one of the project's most enthusiastic collectors, if I can call it that. What motivates you? How did you get involved with this campaign? Um, I get from law school. I have always had bread tags by my And I have no idea how to do it. And I have a winner. I go to Google and look at bread tags for wheelchair. What comes up? And I go to the end my day. I have a ticket or symbol for you. I have a name for your bread. En ik was dus, uh, oké, okay, wat gaan nou hier aan? En toen die volgende aan, toen lees ik in 1 Johannes 17, 
wie aardse besitting het en sy broers in gebruik lei, maar geen gevoel vir hom het nie. Hoe kan die liefde van God in hom wees? En toe weet ek net, ek moet die um, project begin by Paul Roos en al die omliggende skole kry en dit ons begin met die project. That's why he's got so many badges. You can see, that's why he's got so many badges in the project. How, how, many, how many do you think you've collected? Um, bread tags of bread tags, yeah. Oh, for sure. Tons, tons, tons. We tons. collected from him the other day, and it was the whole car was full. <laughs> Dude, that is so good, and we're going to get to see the fruits of those labors a little bit this morning. So I'm going to ask both of you to stick around. We've got something very special. You can see the goosebumps already rising on my. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking about what we're going to be doing, but um, loving where both of you have come from in this journey, um, and thank you so much for doing what you do on a daily basis. Very proud of you, bro, very, very proud. So stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show because it's about to get even more feel good. Audrey and Diabia have got a very special surprise to share with us a little bit later on the show. Stick around. It's my Feel Good Breakfast show. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have been talking about disabilities being a disability awareness a month here in South Africa. I've been warning all the guests that I've got like new dad syndrome where I cry very easily and it might just happen right now. I'm going to welcome back Bootle Ben Kozi Mene. Bootle, Bootle means a beauty of God. Yes. Um, very fitting, very, very fitting into corner as well. We got uh, just a, a little inside um, window into your story as well. And of course, Diabia and Audrey have joined us now for bread tags from wheelchairs. And we've got a very special gift to give this beauty of God right in front of us. Please make your way in here okay. um, if you can. Mm -hmm. So, Butle, understanding that you have very specific needs, um, this uh, custom-made wheelchair, courtesy okay. of uh, Bread Tags for Wheelchairs, is now yours. That's your new ride. <laughs> um, it looks absolutely amazing, guys. Just talk okay. us through what you are, are providing for Butle, Audrey. Um, we really want to help her and her mom get around much easier and then making their life easier. Okay. So, you know, she has a lot of challenges, so we're very happy to help in every little bit we can. Okay. Um, Diabia, is there a message you would like to, to give this, this beautiful pair, seeing as you played such a, a big part in this process? Um, I will just say that they must be strong and they live can't be easy, but we will be able to do it and we will be able to get better. Okay. So, strong. Yeah. Um, Sikona, congratulations. Um, I know it's just a small step in the right direction okay. for you. I know you have a massive challenge ahead of you. Um, but uh, how do you feel? Is there anything you'd like to say? No, I'm very excited for, for the wheelchair that I got. And thank you very much, because it will make life very easier for me so that she can go from A to Z and everything. Thank you. Oh, good, Claire. Um, I know it's a lot to take in. Please send us lots of pictures. Um, we, are, we are so proud of what you're doing and how strong you are and how strong you become through this process. Thank you so much for, for bringing this gorgeous young lady through to us. And thank you for opening your heart like you have. We, we really are so proud of you. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you so much. Ah, just a small act can go a very, very long way. Thank you so much to everyone who's been a part of our discussion this morning. And hopefully this in some way also offers aid and support to you um, as parents and families also in this similar situation.